Hello, this is Bill Clodsey. We're joining a competitive sealed league for Guilds of Ravnica. This is going to model a regular sealed, not the special pack pre-release sealed, which will only make things simpler because that'll draw you closer to to one of your specific guilds. We'll go, I mean, the process should be the same. We're going to identify the best deck or as close as we can to that. And we'll start by looking at what could be the most powerful cards? This is a token enhancer. <laughs> Thousand Year Storm gives all your instants and sorceries storm. Tajik is very good. Foundry's kind of neat. <laughs> New art. Erratic Cyclops. This card should be pretty strong, impossible to attack through. And every spell you do on your turn is going to make it a you know decent attacker. So that's you know a lot of value for four mana. And Dawn of Hope. Wow, four mana to make a soldier token. If we if we can combo this with the divine visitation, that's gonna be four mana for an angel and a soldier with lifelink. So that yeah, that already looks really good. Uncommons, we find Rock Charger, which is sort of the uncommon version reprint of a good card. I wish this would turn on its it does turn on its side. Target creature gets plus two plus two, and then it's a four mana lightning helix. Uh, I mean, obviously that's very good. Keep scrolling down here. Beam Splitter Mage. Not sure if we have any specific payoff for that or if we can splash. But it looks like a lot of Golgari and Demir stuff left over. Silent Dart. And this card's probably better than it looks, but I'm not excited to run it, certainly. Dragonauts. Okay, now let's break it down by color. That's going to look a bit weird because we have five color pairs over here. Wow, triple legionnaire is going to be aggressive. The fresh-faced recruits, I mean, something to do early. Maybe if we have some mentor payoffs like Tajik here. With haste, very good, very good. So imagine this just progression, pretty common. Turn two, recruit. Turn three, Tajik, pump the recruit. Three, two, first strike. Turn four, Sky Knight. And if Tajik's still around, then pump the Sky Knight as well when it's attacking. All right. Guild Gates. I mean, we have one Sacred Foundry. We've got Boros Locket. And then a lot of fixing for Celesnia. So it might be easy to splash a green card or maybe even a... Selesnia card, like the champion looks pretty good. And the shaper is not super exciting. Gateway Plaza, some more fixing. And some other gates. So every single pack has a gate. I think. Yeah, so it's six gates, and unlike in Dragon's Maze, the Sacred Foundry takes the place of a rare. So that's just extra fixing. And if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have any Boros fixing. Now that's our Boros, and let's see, we have a bunch of these swarm guild mages at Uncommon. Just want to outline sort of the the power that each guild is boasting here. Said so Selesnya is not great. Um, not too much in, is it? Not too much except some good card draw in Demir. And then most of the cards we have for Golgari are these undergrowth payoffs, and I'm not sure if that'll work with the rest of our colors. Let's take a look at the colors, especially white and red to begin with. Pack Beasts, super aggressive. Removes two creatures for a turn. You're going to be the ones attacking, so that should work out well. 10th District Guard, not super exciting. I mean, the effect is fine. It might be enough to let your mentor creature survive. And then Skyline Scout's probably fine, too. Uh, not... Actually, Take Heart should be good. Crush Contraband might be more of a sideboard thing. But what I'm really excited about here is the Dawn of Hope and Divine Visitation combo. Is there any other way to make a token? because on its own, that might not be enough, but we can also splash this champion 
Does Tajik make a token? I don't know. Yeah, I guess that's supposed to be most of a mostly a Selesnya thing. So payoffs for the visitation. Maybe two is not enough, but we'll keep an eye on that. All right, so that gives us a, a sense for white. N nothing too broken except potentially the, the combo here with the token maker. Next, we'll look at red. Doubt red will have many token makers, but we'll keep those in mind. Fearless Halberdier. I mean, this is a vanilla 3-2. But sometimes you just need a vanilla 3-2. Yeah, not much left over here. I'd say that Direct Current is a spell that really rewards the Cyclops, because that's a 5 damage swing. Defender Creatures with Defender can't block this turn. More, that's also more of a sideboard card, so I'm not really excited about the creatures here, but maybe these cards are okay. Look at green. So again, this will be very easy to splash. And we might really want to play any token maker we can find in green. It doesn't look like we have any. We have a Convoke Fog. We have a Disenchant effect. A big old Siege Worm. Some random creatures. The uh, Harpooner's very good. Of course, it's an early green play, so you're not super excited to splash it. And, okay, might as well look at all of our colors for completeness here. Black has a couple walls. O3s that surveil one when they enter. This is the kind of creature that Golgari wants more than anything. Because you just want creatures that, ex that are expendable. But Burglar Rat's going to be better than that. Pilfering Imp. Same idea. But right, I mean, it's a good card to have with Price of Fame, so you can trade it up for any creature. Um, the total power here is not going to be good enough, I don't think. How good is the Guild Mage? Uh, the Swarm Guild Mage is very good, but I don't think it replaces the power that we can get out of Boros here. Oh, we got our Leapfrog, Watcher in the Mist, some good payoffs already. Uh, four mana, one four that draws a card. So Muse Drake is solid. Mesmerists get aggressive. We have one Is It Guild Gate, which is the way we'd try to splash blue if we're going into that. A million Demir Informants, one fours. Um, that's okay, but while this effect might be very strong, you cannot win with it. You will never win the game with a bunch of Demir Informants in play unless you switch their power and toughness, which is possible in this format, but don't don't count on it. You need to have some support from flyers like Watcher and, and removal spells to make it to let it get there. Oh, the Passwall Adept is a nice card to have around. Still uh, very little in the way of like removal. So I think we leave that leave that aside. Now we have a sense for the entire pool Let's build it. Let's build our deck. Even if we're not going to play Divine Visitation, we're definitely going to play these token makers, at least in the Dawn of Hope. I'll probably play these rares, maybe a couple direct currents, probably some combat tricks, but we want to put in as many random creatures as possible. And you can see that our curve doesn't look, it doesn't look too ridiculously low by any means. Some of our creatures are much better than others. Yeah, let's put in the champion. This card's going to be a good payoff here. And then we have some lockets. Tenth District Guard. I'll put in, you know, I'll try out Divine Visitation. It's just one card in our deck, and it goes really crazy if we if we get it going with either the Champion or or the um, Dawn of Hope. 
probably enough to make it exciting. So what we're going to ignore is Demir and focus on the Naya combination. And that means we don't want blue, we don't want this. Zoom in once again. We don't want these gates. In fact, we don't have any gate payoff. There are There is one artifact that has like some plus one plus one counter payoff if you're doing that thing. Call her the culprit. What does our creature base look like? If we're splashing any green card, it could be crushing canopy out of the sideboard. Pax favor is cool, but I, I like our white tricks. Harpooner. And that's about all I'm excited about there. Yeah, this is this is a funny exercise because I didn't expect there to be this few playables. We just have to fill in with like random cards that I'm not happy to play, which is fine. Maybe goblin pikers are are like what the rule for this format. Take heart, just a bunch of early attackers, and then some ways to protect them. There's not a lot to punish the the early tiny creatures, I guess. And that gives us, yeah, I mean, that gives us three pump spells, plus two, plus two. Boros Locket, we probably want that, and maybe even Selesnia Locket, and just play 18 lands. Dawn of Hope, I mean, a couple good things with the Cyclops. I could see playing direct current instead of a 15th creature just another direct current and that means 23 the double locket make it makes it easier to find the dawn of hope or the champion if we need those and then yeah the, the lands could look something like that for just this one green card we're splashing what does the wood shaper do it looks like it'd be exciting but it just looks at the top four cards and gets creature or enchantment. It doesn't even find land. But it does draw that card. And, hmm, finding an enchantment means that, well, 1450, it has 16 hits in the deck, the top four. So you figure it's likely to hit a little more often than not. And it gets some of our best cards, the Visitation, the Dawn of Hope. So that's interesting. Okay. Pack Beasts. Color the Culprit. This card I'm not 100% sold on, but maybe it's better than... Maybe it's better than Direct Current here. In fact, red does not look like our big color. I could even cut the second Direct Current and put in Righteous Blow. How are these lockets looking? Guardian. Is a guardian worth splashing? It's a 2-4. It is a 2-4 creature. It doesn't look very good to me. But the first time we only have uh, one mentor, so maybe that's not so good. Got, our, got a bunch of legionnaires. It does kind of hold down the fort on the ground. Tempted to cut one locket and play something like Crush Contraband. It is sealed, and this kills the artifact creatures. It kills the lockets early, and it pumps our Cyclops. So, okay, that, you know, I don't know exactly what this format looks like yet. But this looks like it could be quite powerful. Certainly we have our late game engine. We have a bunch of aggressive creatures early. And you know, a lot of white cards. So 20 white cards. 9 red cards. 
three of which never require red, and then one. So 29, one, that's loud. Um, five, start with this. Doing the goblin locksmith. Yeah, that's that's where we're at here. Goblin piker. See how good that is. Get that creature count there. And yeah, probably something like one guild gate, one sacred foundry. Maybe another guild gate. And another white source. So that is what? 12 white, 6 red. Creatures with defender can't block. You know, I'm just going to put in the guardian. Uh, it should be fairly easy to cast. And it's a fine size of a creature for random times when you might want it to be a bit bigger. The walls, I don't expect there to be too many. Yeah, this um, this looks okay. How many cards do we really want this red for? It's pretty much five cards, six sources. We have a ton of white. Maybe we can go down on one white for one more red. That's seven, 11, seven for 20 white cards. Of course, some of that is going to be able to be cast off red anyway. Okay, that looks good to me. And that's three green sources for, for a one green card, but a, a really good one. All right, that is the first iteration of this deck and it's a five round league. We will try to win as many of those rounds as possible. What do you like to play first? Yeah, our deck is kind of aggressive generally and sealed. I strongly consider going second, but here we can really curve out if we get our turn three haste creatures down. And we have potential to get there. Need some lands to make this work, but at least we have a few early plays. Hunted Witness, that would be so good in our deck, but can't always get it. Oh, this is not the one that dies and makes a, and makes a, it's not the one that attacks and makes a token with Battalion, it's the one that dies and makes a token. Still, it would be good with our Mythic. I would play the heck out of it. Um, yeah, they could attack here, we can attack back for more. I don't want to lose my fresh-faced recruit and give them a token here. They've got their own. Now, we get punished by, by a pump spell, but I'd love to righteous blow this recruit while we can. Here's turn three to Jeek or something. Get rid of it. Okay, it does work. So, life total preserved and then fearless halberdier. Cool. Let's get going here. Legionnaire getting in the air. There's no possible block they could make, otherwise I wouldn't F6, but we do have this pump spell, integrity instant, very easy to cast. I'd rather use the Lightning Helix part of it, of course. I'd rather just get Sky Knight Legionnaire down. If we, if there's nothing we have to deal with, and this does the three damage to any target, so it is burn. You can do this to your opponent. And then might not, Dawn of Hope might just not come into play this game. Who knows? This is the kind of card that once you get up to eight mana, you're doing really well for yourself. And even six mana, you can chump with the thing and draw a card. 
Okay. They are still on the back foot here. We're trading hits of four, but we're ahead in the race. Hammer dropper. Interesting. Hammer dropper, huh? Well, what does that do? Does that change our math? I mean, that's a lot of damage. I think we'll just intervene here. Well, hold on, five. They could do 10. Get them to eight. It's unlikely we die this next turn, but not impossible. We get them to 10. Yeah, let's just do intervention, kill that hammer dropper. That represents so much damage and it's just gonna buy us a turn here. We're already ahead in the race, so I'd rather deal with their their board change. Of course, that's one of our best pieces of removal and they might play something even better. We'll just have to wait and see. The other reason I did that was because we can't make two plays this turn and if we draw land, that becomes an option. See, they're leaving up everything here, which is pretty scary. They have their own intervention, yeah, yeah. Good card to play. You'll you'll see a lot of these if if you're going against a specific guild. Look out for the best uncommons. I mean, they'll they'll seem to be more common, and that's just because everyone will play every copy that they open. Four. I mean, yeah, it just it just trades. Um, one for one in tempo doesn't affect too awfully much here. It's a funny one. When you attack, you can sort of spirit bomb this guy. All your other creatures can lend their power. Even creatures that have come into play that turn, which is worth keeping an eye on. Do they have another intervention or something? I have no idea. What to do, what to do. I almost want to play this locket. That gets up to five, and then at six we could do Dawn of Hope and make it token. And the fresh-faced recruit at this point is just as good a blocker as the champion. So, yeah. Looks good to me. The champion, I guess, has a better chance of killing them next turn, but I'm happy enough to, to trade off here with the Halberdier, if they even want to let that <laughs> be an option. No attacks is funny. We do have this flyer. Ooh, I guess that doesn't change much. But it's uh, the second thing we can do on the same turn. So, uh, if their last card is Righteous Blow, it makes sense to pump up the other guy. It really... I wonder. Yeah, let's just get this guard and pump up the Legion. In case that matters. Then they have to chump something. And when this dies, they'll get their lifelink thing. They didn't want to attack last turn. Yeah, I'm just going to come in with our flyer. I don't want them to unlock their lifelinker. Because we're not going to win this turn anyway. They could only block with the hunted wit um, witness, I guess, and hunted wumpus. And... Uh, yeah, that might work out poorly for us. 
So I'll sit here at nine, unless they have a no creatures opponent controls can block this turn, we should be in decent shape. Yeah. As long as not all of our stuff dies, we're okay. Five, there's a big five mana burn spell. They're making this thing bigger. Let's make these, oops, these two easy blocks in this chump. And if that's not good enough, then I don't know what is good enough. Maybe nothing. Okay. Okay, Dawn of Hope. Makes the same thing as this champion. It does let them know <laughs> that we have a thing. If we make it. Two, three, they have to block there. Tough one. That lifelink, though. Okay, not a problem. We just attack with everything so that they are forced to block this good card with Vigilance creatures attacking. Oh, I guess they're they're not technically dead there, but they'll, they'll assume they are. Direct Current is good against most of their creatures. So is Righteous Blow. The tricks are good, too. They, they're going to gain us a life. Visitation would be sweet. Um, Crush Contraband, we didn't see a target for. It doesn't mean they don't have any, but Direct Current, we saw a lot of targets for. And I think we have just enough lands to warrant that. Seven sources, yeah, should be good. Collar, Collar the Culprit. That's one I'm not even sure you want in a deck. We certainly didn't see any targets for it. Doesn't mean they don't have any. I'll put in another direct current. At the very least, once you have them down to five, you just need to get three damage in. <laughs> uh, finish them off with direct current. Yeah. Okay. Mostly, if we're killing a 5-2 with this, that's really good. And we'll be on the draw, so these early interactive spells are even more important. And we're back. And this time, we've got Tajik. See how good that is. 3 mana, 3-2 haste. Mantor. We prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to other creatures you control. <laughs> and they're down to 5 cards. That's unfortunate. And they don't even like their top card. Or they didn't like it. And now it's something else. Wow. Skyline Scout. I will happily take a two drop and then follow it up with the Tajik. Good hand for a direct current as well and they're just missing land drops so this this isn't going to be pretty. Look away. The Boros Legion doesn't take prisoners in situations like this. All right one and oh. Back for a few more rounds. Round two versus get there. That's my plan. 17 lands, we've got a lock at 16, almost, yeah, we've got two chances of drawing a land. And once we get one land, we'll be good for a while. Be a little greedy here and keep this. Just a little greedy. Two tries. Yeah, I think we're favored to draw land in two tries. First try, here we go, red off the top. Well, the color card is red. No problem, no problem. We can just draw a land here. Yeah, all right. I was never worried. I'm trying to play it. 
there's so many people online right now that might be a little laggier than usual. This is the first time, at least on Magic Online, where you're getting to play with these new cards. Guardian. Now what, what would I have to do to get a second land in this situation? Erstwild Trooper. Awkward. Because I can take that down with Take Heart. Or I can play Sky Knight Legionnaire. Get a guaranteed two in. I'll just get the I'll just get the guaranteed two in. They can only activate this once a turn, so it can't be bigger than a 4-4. Four four. So our take heart would not only gain a life, but first strike and kill the trooper. And kind of two for one them there. But we can't even represent that play if we don't attack first. Put a 1-1 one, one, create target on thing. Okay. Um, yeah, so this legionnaire is just going to get by in the air for a while unimpeded. They don't even want to block. It's a bit funny. Let of champion. What to do? What should we do? I kind of like the guardian here. It's just a pretty good blocker for the centipede. Maybe they have tricks, maybe they don't. In any case, we're still getting in our damage in the air. We have a few points of life here. I'd rather get the Cyclops on the board before doing much else, but yeah, so that might mean next turn we play the locket and hold up one or two take hearts. Now I'll take the two damage, and if they really want to discard a card, to get another two damage in. That doesn't seem like a good use of a card unless they have way more um, undergrowth payoffs than I realize. Yeah, good locket here. Furthermore, oh, they got some stuff. Artful takedown. Mine, oh, it even tells you what, what each ability is going to be. Take heart. Well, I don't care about the life as much. Let's pump this and pump this. And we'll still be getting in four here. We don't lose a creature. Kind of sucks to have to use that, but this is our renewable stream of damage. They can get in a full hit here of whatever, I mean, five or seven. Uh, they'll keep the trooper back. They have the Golgari assassin back. Oh, nice. And it's discard and the effect is draw. I don't know why their whole board is dark, but when you make a, or at least this trooper, but when you make a change on in the matrix, um, get some unintended glitches. What happens here? What happens? They could have a creature and that kills the recruit. This is just plus two, plus two. It's nothing special. They only activate that once. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to attack with everything. And you really want to be on the offensive versus this assassin. And I'm fine enough trading it with this terrible card, uh, Guardian. Yes, yeah, so they're going to make this block. And of course, we just pass here. They're discarding the snitch. And we have two options. We can burn this thing. 
gain some life. Or we can just pump it up. Pump it up. Let's pump it up. Because they can't activate that more than one once a turn. These will trade. They take two at the very least. And the Cyclops doesn't seem to have any upside here, but the champion does. We already used our four drop spell. Because we can start making tokens and then get out of reach here. Crawl Swarm. This is a 4 1 flyer, so that's pretty good. That's pretty decent. Crawl Swarm. Gain first strike. Oh, we don't have the second red to give it first strike. So, what do we do? What do we do here? We can make the... No. Actually, yeah, we can target the champion with Mentor and then pump it up with the Recruit. Attack here, kill the swarm. And this will attack as a 4-4. Four, four. And then they can kill Tajik with the Centipede. Or we could just offer either one. That should be fine too. Two high priority targets. All right, I'll just attack with everybody. That guarantees something like five damage this turn. Uh, mentor, let's let's put it on the recruit. No, I wonder if we use the ability and we just don't have anything to tap. What happens? Tajik, so. They're going to kill our flyer and kill our Tajik and leave a lot of other good stuff, including our token maker. So, I mean, hey, fair enough. They're going to need a lot to recover from this board. Minus four, minus four to all creatures would be pretty good. Affectionate Indrik, well, that's also pretty good. And it's going to be hard to beat. <laughs> They'll kill this guy. Come on. Something good. This has no reach. I'll call that good. Can we go the distance? They have two cards. One of them has to gain life or deal with a flyer or kill us. Lock it. We need another green or white to activate it, so basically white. I don't think we have any sources that can add green without adding white. Planes off the top. Ooh. Uh, yeah, this is a nice curve topper. Tap up to two target creatures your opponent's control. So out of all of my opponents, I will tap up to two of their creatures, including this Indric. So even if they have the answer to this, it has to be like an artful dodge to tap the other one. Artful, not artful dodge, artful whatever, <laughs> artful takedown. Close one. Pretty close game. They didn't have defenders. They didn't have a lot of answers to flyers. I'm gonna bring in one current. This is a this is a game where collar is gonna be good. Maybe crush is not as good. Golgari, like they don't have that much. Yeah, submit like that. The tricks seem good, although we have to chain together a lot of tricks to make uh, to save from that artful takedown. Uh, the tricks are always going to be good on these first strikers, especially while they're attacking. And they're a way to pump up our Cyclops, which didn't seem good there, but maybe it'll get better. Oh no. This hand is not as good as the last one, so I'm going to mulligan as well. Okay. I'm going to be too greedy here. This, this is fine. Take heart. Nope, we want a red source. 
That's all we want. Hey, we got there. And yeah, usually you'll want to play your gates before your shock lands. The upside of being able to play this untapped might even be relevant this game. Right, so this turn, no need to shock ourselves. So maybe we'll draw a mountain off the top and then we'll avoid it completely. If not, yeah, just shock ourselves and then shock them. Let's see, Hitchclaw Recluse, that's good against us. Really good against us. It doesn't change the fact that I want to get a lot of these flyers into play. And eventually we can tap down their blockers. Spinal Centipede. Like, what? what is spinal about it? There's a little, like, death touch pump spell. I don't think we have to worry about that. Let's just attack. Get in our two damage. To start catching up here. We could get in maybe six damage next turn and play a 3-3. Three, three. This might be a game where they stabilize... They build up some pretty good nonsense. I don't want to put the counter on the Recluse. We just don't have a good answer for it yet. And we find our Mythic that makes angels, and that's how we win this game. Ooh. This is the erstwhile trooper. We still get our legion attacking here but falling behind in this this here race if they come in with a centipede or maybe even the erstwhile trooper i'm not sure if we block that let's see next turn we're pretty likely to have a beast we only have one tapped land left in the deck deadly visits a good one got this he got his teacup there he's about to he's about to read his notes and dispose of this assassin in that order. <laughs> hmm. Well, how big can we make our champion? Probably not big enough. Just lock it up here. Pass it back. I mean, let's say we make it a 5-5. They could still kill it and trade with two things. Whatever bad creature they have in their hand and the trooper. They might not have another creature in their hand, but it's the kind of thing that you'll only consider that when you can't afford not to. <laughs> hmm. Six, that's a lot. I'll prevent some damage here, get a creature out of their hand, hopefully. Maybe they just want to trade it if their creature in hand is better. They only have two cards left. Pitiless Gorgon, that's a fine trade. We save some damage, they lose a Death Toucher. And, and what else? Well, get our little pack beast to intrude. Tap down that and that. And we don't really want to attack with everything. Hopefully they don't have Artful Takedown as their last card. Although it would be you know, one Artful Takedown and 13 cards, so it's pretty likely. And they're, they're pausing here. Oh, you know what they might have? Artful Takedown. We need one blocker back. So if we just attack with one creature, they can kill this, tap this, and we have a chump blocker. Four, five, and then we don't even die. Yeah, I think we just attack with one creature.
that pause there makes me really think they have artful takedown. They still might use it here in case they find another piece of removal. I mean, it's it's almost right to do no matter what. Yeah, they kill that. They're going to make us block with the Legionnaire because this is just a more expendable creature. Um, did they find a creature? doesn't really matter. Let's kill the 3-2. Their creature gets a little bigger. And top deck wars here. N only one of their creatures is lethal. Crawl swarm. Whoa, that's pretty good. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, it might be too good. It might be too good for us to beat. Very good draw from them. The one creature we can't deal with. Good choice to kill the flyer. Is there any way for us to beat this? Maybe if we draw two cards, we could draw a white. No, we have to use all of these sources. Stand by. All right, so we have one answer to the swarm, and that is drawing both a white source and a two damage righteous blow. Ah, we got halfway there. We needed the. Uh, we needed that thing. So okay, pass here. We just needed a planes, untapped planes, and this righteous blow. Too bad. If this was, if this was uh, Boros locket, then we we could have won there. Not won, but at least survived. Oh well, oh well. Direct current still looks fair enough. Back on the play here. That spider. We'll we'll get that cursed spider. We have our color. That's how we'll get it. On the play. Yes. This is combo hand. We don't have any red, but I don't think we can mulligan this. Two lands with the upside of Dawn of Hope. Um, for the record, that 4-1 flyer for five is solid in this format. I mean, there's a few whatever creatures that can trade with it and some spells, the common spells that take it down, but it's resilient, comes back, you know, you upgrade whatever bad creature you have in your hand to a 4-1 flyer. And we saw it, it's both targeting and accepting its target. Yeah, we saw it trade with our creature, but also, you know, pressure our life total. So, pretty good. Is this a reprint art looks familiar i don't think it's exactly a reprint anyway pitiless gorgon will shock ourselves for the honor of attacking for some damage in the air and the 12th district guard can't do much better than trading with a gorgon feed their undergrowth a little bit artful takedown that card is not easy to beat bartisan bats Sure. Well, we'll use our little trick here. Let's see if they fall for it. It's just enough. We even gain some life, and I should pay attention to my interactions. Gain a life there. Draw a card. We miss out on playing a creature, but I'm more interested in the card advantage. Crawl swarm. Yeah, look at this. Look. Would you look at this? It's pretty slow for them to get it back, so let's just do two to the swarm. Get our own knight in there. We have to remember we can do this again by discarding a card. But that'll just be a late game thing. Deadly visit. 
Yep. To watch out for the surveil to see what goes in the graveyard. Three cards in the graveyard now. Three creatures. And they put a couple more lands in the graveyard. Okay. All right. Are we doing this? I think we're doing this. Go. Deal with one of these enchantments or lose. Don't do it. Wild Saratok. Okay. Land is good because that means. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Oh, it's instead. Oh, that's not as good as I thought. I thought it was in addition, but it's not. It's instead. Yeah, it's still good. Okay. If it was in addition, then I would like my 1-1 my one, one, uh, lifelinker. This card maybe isn't as good as I thought. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Take take our hit of four, because I don't want to trade my angel with their Saratok. I mean it's a four four vigilance angel. Like let's get let's hit with it once. Gain one life for each creature in the graveyard, which they have plenty of, three. Cool. We got we got our angel. Combo! Combo assembled. Direct current. We don't have a good target for that. This is a 4-4. Four, four. I want to get up to the point of making two angels a turn. And if we're not quite there, we'll just do some other stuff. Vigilance Angel. And now that we have a bunch of angels, I'm happy enough to start trading them off. I just wanted that first hit in. Make our angel trade it off. If they can beat this, then I don't know. I don't know what we're supposed to do. <laughs> if they can beat this nonsense. I just want to survive here. I mean, Artful Takedown is a good first step, but we keep an angel. And that's going to untap right away. We've got Collar the Culprit. But yeah, at this point, we just play our fresh faced recruit, attack with an angel, make an angel. I love this art, by the way. You can barely see it here, but Dawn of Hope, that's Amara in the foreground, and this giant tree castle in the background. Dowser of Lights is no problem. It might start to be a problem when they attack, but not worried about that. Eight, nine, ten. We're almost killing them here. Yeah, we can't quite get them though, can we? So let's just put enough lands into play to make two angels every turn. I like that combo. It is significantly better than making soldiers, but I thought I was getting my soldiers too. Good to know. Round three on the draw with Boros stuff. I keep this. This is looking good. This has the curve I was talking about. The turn two, two drop into Tajik, into Legionnaire. So two mentor triggers by turn four or whatever. I guess mentor creatures are kind of uncommon. You're going to have to prioritize them big time. We want our first striker a little more valuable in the early game, whereas the scout might be more valuable in the late game. What? Oh. oh. Two damage to target creature. Well, that's not even fair. <laughs> that's not fair at all.
Does that look fair to you? It's going to trade with Tajik one way or the other. Hmm. Would we rather trade now and get a 3-2 in play? Or get 4 damage in this turn? Get four damage in this turn. That's really close. Oh, that's close. Super close. But they might be tempted to use the Crater Maker on one of these creatures immediately. Ooh, Mr. War Boss. Nope, so now. Oh, wow, this is great for us. They think they're more aggressive. But what they don't know is that we have Tajik right now. And that's getting in for lots of damage. Attacks this combat if able. So they can leave their goblin back. That doesn't really affect us. Maybe we just get our Sky Knight mentored up. and then play a, f a foundry. Yeah, I don't think they want to block anything here, so that's a lot of damage. And we don't want to take extra damage here if we can't use it on anything, so foundry comes in. We have our combo, although I doubt we have enough time to set it up. If somehow the board trades off, maybe, maybe we can set it up. Here I expect the Crater Maker to attack and then kill Tajik before our turn and then we take you know five damage from the war boss but ooh, guild mage what is this color combination naya black everything but blue crazy color combination yeah here comes a little another little goblin They only get in six then. They're leaving one goblin back just as a, a safe chump blocker. And yeah, they'll go after Tajik here, I'm sure. Right. We don't have enough to activate Dawn of Hope, and playing Divine Visitation doesn't do much menace oh menace is going to be hard to swallow one two three four five six seven this is so good together eight nine ten eleven yeah i mean it's just too much damage it's just too much damage if we don't have two blockers back They'll have three goblin attackers. Two of them will be two twos. That's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's eleven damage exactly with the swarm guild mage, but that would take all of their mana. So the two blockers is is definitely enough. But we absolutely need two blockers. So play the scout. Play the hope attack for three and that keeps pressure on them too the gaining two life here is not irrelevant but they might not have their fifth land they might not attack with the war boss and once we can start making some life lingers that could make it easier in the face of well it's going to be slow but Depends how aggressive their attack is here. I will trade off. I'll certainly try to trade off with the war boss if they give us the option, but I'll trade one of these guys off with the goblin too. Or, shoot, they have to kill us this turn. I didn't realize 
they have to kill us or spend the the mana to gain life because we're attacking for five in the air next turn not too hard to notice here <laughs> i'm getting there i'm figuring things out by the time they're relevant anyway i guess it could have been relevant that turn whether or not we attack with the legionnaire but that made a lot of sense anyway combat they have their fresh recruit they have to attack these guys are coming in we'll make this block actually yeah i think we want to make that block that forces them to hold up this mana but if we attack with everything that forces them to lose a better creature one two three four like the war boss yeah and i think that's their plan so one two three four we go to seven one two three four five six seven so we could die to the the land drop next turn yeah, I think I think I just don't block here. Four seven. They do have a land. No kidding. Oh, we're gonna lose to Artful Takedown now. <laughs> it's all five colors. Oh, we're always gonna lose to Artful Takedown. That card is way too good. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> just what is what is the best card? with the colors your opponents have. Yeah, we're dead. They had the fifth land anyway for the guild mage. So it wasn't even close. They're just like, what's the safest play I can make? Yep, direct currents coming in, the uh, color of the culprit coming out, and crush contraband coming out. I'm lucky we didn't draw those because they wouldn't have been good here. But I'll be on the play again. That That was a really, fast draw from us and i am impressed that we lost so easily well there's our combo i have to keep this hand even though it's kind of light on land in the hopes that we get there they they mulligan i guess the rule here is power over consistency Take an early turn off, getting Dawn of Hope into play, and we have a few turns to, to draw land. Hopefully we can hit our stride. If not, looking somewhat grim. Like three, you know, two or three lands on top, and we probably win. Zero lands on top, we probably lose. Okay, there we go. That's huge. That's such a big difference from that card being anything else. Could easily be the difference between winning and losing. And it doesn't matter if we draw land this turn, we just go another Legionnaire. Or it doesn't matter nearly as much. All right, their turn three. They did mulligan and they bottomed their top card, so they might have kept a two-lander and they're failing to find a third land, or they just have a five-color mess and they don't know what land to play. Well, they definitely have a five-color mess, but pretty consistent for all that. Next turn, we've got the Artful Takedown. No doubt. One, two, three, yeah, just get another Legionnaire there. It only kills a creature it is better when you have somewhat of a board presence. So it's like kill a creature, gain two life on this board. Instead of like kill a creature, gain two life and get in for eight damage, which <laughs> is what it looks like a lot of the time. Okay, Swarm Guild Mage. That's gonna be a little slow for us. We could play a lot of power this turn. Like, give up attacking with our Legionnaire to get a Guardian into play. And the next turn, maybe we tap two creatures. Yeah. Should 
shouldn't really do this first, but who knows? They might have a the one the two damage spell here, righteous blow. Nah. And they're in five colors, so it's at once like less likely they have it, but more possible that they have it. And it is something you might want to bring in against this. And they say that's too fast. I can't beat it, even with my artful takedowns. Cool. What about Crush Contraband for the Locket? Maybe. I'm still sticking to my Divine Visitation plan. It can work. We saw it work. We know it's possible. I can see it being good, but the direct currents are definitely good here. The one advantage we have here is that our deck's going to be more consistent than theirs. It, it can't help but be more consistent, even if their fixing's pretty good, because a lot of their stuff's going to come into play tapped. And whoops, I'm trying to reorganize my hand here. Uh, yeah, again, we don't have a one drop, so let's get our land that has to come into play tapped first. We know we'll need the red eventually, but. Yeah, we also don't have a two drop here. Close things up. Make sure I can understand this hand fully. Everything looks a bit different. Yeah, so we play the, the foundry and we do not pay the life. Okay, erstwhile trooper. The card's been somewhat impressive. And now, the Legionnaire in there. Hopefully they make an attack that lets Tajik be as good as possible. Overgrown Tomb, nice, nice, with no shocking themselves. Okay. I hope this doesn't bite us, but it's a good chance to get Tajik into play. An untapped land would have made me a little feel a little better about this. Uh, we're going to attack, so that's definitely a, a good sign. Get in our damage. We're once again ahead, and this Lightning Helix might be able to make a big difference next turn. See what they have. The trooper is a good blocker for Tajik, and they're just going to hold everything back here. Visitation. Hmm. Oh, funny. They don't have blue. They don't have blue. We could. We could use our pump spell, Integrity, to pump Tajik, which pumps the Legionnaire even more. And then give Tajik first strike, if it comes to it. Yeah, that play... That play looks pretty good, except they have all their mana up. Which means they could have, they could have spot removal, just like a, a black, you know, kill target thing spell, and that gives up on the power of intervention. So I'm going to just attack with the Sky Knight here. And that sets us up pretty well for a win, I, I should hope. Get the Rock Charger in. That lets Tajik attack past all this. All of our creatures are flying. We hold up our Integrity Trick in case of something. And all they had was gain two life. All right. 
the threat of activation and threat of you know all their mana up kind of got us that turn except that they they didn't do anything except dampen the blow a bit now they have white but no blue blue is by far the scariest color from the cards we've seen well, black also has scary spells Next turn, I'm trying to think about next turn. We've got eight damage from our flyers, and that puts them within uh, intervention reach. Put them at three. They could gain two life and go to you know, two. Begin combat. Here they come. Everybody's coming in. I suppose I can make this block and then they have to to get anything done here they have to respond do a trick and if yeah I lose my rock charger that's no problem it's just representing one or two damage this turn force their hand here but we're, we're not at a million life like we have to we have to fight for it. We can't just give away two points of life for nothing. Whoa, here's four, minus four, minus four to everything. Gatekeeper Gargoyle. Plus one, plus one for each gate you control. That's not bad. Oh, there's only one gate because the tomb is not a gate. So that's pretty good. That's really good. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, they can do ten damage to us next turn, one way or another. Uh, I wonder what to do. Integrity might be really good. The pack beast doesn't quite finish it here. This takes two to get first strike. Their deck can't be built for a surprise bunch of damage. That's just not what that deck does. Or so I tell myself. Not an easy one. OK, not doing that. The Pack Beast gets in a lot of damage. We know that much. Or we could do Integrity and then play Fresh Faced Recruit in light of all this. And that prevents four and kills the gargoyle. Yeah, killing the gargoyle is probably the best here. All right, so we attack with everything. We give to Jeek flying, because why not? And we mentor the only creature we can. And we see how they block. They block here. So we will... I wish we could give it first strike <laughs> and cast intervention or integrity. So we cast integrity here. Then we give it first strike, because we can. That kills that. They take five, and we can play a blocker. Not a bad blocker. And that pretty, I mean, they have to kill us this turn, or intrusive, intrusive pack beast is definitely going to tap down anything they can come up with, whether it's two spiders or another gargoyle or whatever. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, Legionnaire doesn't change much. I mean, pretty much we win <laughs> no matter what we do here, but yeah, tap down your stuff. This is a nice finisher. 
its stats aren't great, but it has vigilance for some reason, and it's the perfect curve topper to your aggressive deck. 3 0. Going into round four versus Polar Clint, we're still undefeated here. The very first sealed of Guilds of Ravnica. They're in a six. I'm going to keep these two landers. They seem to be working out. Um, sucks to mulligan on the play, for sure. And we'll retrieve our tempo if we can get our third land. Nice. Good draw. And that's pretty much the perfect draw here because now we have all our colors. And in the main deck, we don't have the double red stuff. We haven't really done much with Lead of Champion, but I think it's a fine splash. It is one of the two ways we have of going crazy with our angels. And that, even now, we only did one game. Yeah, let's see. They were leaving up their mana. Maybe they have the Sure Strike or whatever, the um, Luminous Blow. I don't, it's definitely not either of those two things, but whatever it is, we're going to get there. And they still take some damage here. Unless they have the three mana Convoke Fog, but that's also kind of a an unlikely thing. Luminous Bonds on our little dude. Main deck Naturalize might pay off this game, who knows. Why the little dude? Did they have a 2-2 flyer specifically? Or the crawl little warrior that can fight a flyer? Hmm. Unless they have hurricane to, to kill flyers, attacking flyers or something. I think we're better off here just playing land, attacking with everything, and then deploying you know some other stuff second main. This guy. They, they bonded the little guy. I don't know why they would do that. At least they did something. But yeah, that wasn't the best draw from them. Selesnia, this is where Collar is going to be good, Crush Contraband is going to be good, and Direct Current is not going to be good. Submit again. We could even look like if, if something goes crazy, we could look for crushing canopy, but white might have some flyers. Green certainly doesn't have many flyers, which is too bad. I mean, green used to have scrib sprites and things, just like one mana, one, one flyer, which was, I think that was pretty cool to have stuff like that. You know, the color of mana you are doesn't dictate whether or not you have wings, right? Oh well. Yeah, keep this. Sorry, I'm trying to evaluate a hand like this. Maybe our Cyclops gets his day in the sun. Usually he's just down there in the, the bellows. But he'll pop up. Make a splash. Look at that. What's he doing? He's like, my hands are very hot. Naya. We're Naya. This is a different deck, methinks. Methinks this is a different deck. Well, take heart. Hmm. Yeah, I'm fine trading my guard for whatever this is. They might even have a, their own Sky Knight to to attack, and then mentor it up, which would be very annoying. Hopefully, they don't have any haste thing. What's the other haste, dude? The green undergrowth guy that would come in as a zero zero. Uh, that's that's another haste guy we could worry about. It isn't Legionnaire, so. Ouch. 
they're hitting a lot harder than we are all of a sudden. Well, okay. Get our Mr. Cyclops out there. They can still come in for three in the air, but not three on the ground. And when they leave back their 3-3 three, three flyer, it sort of caps out at 3-3 three, three for now. We have Take Heart, and that pumps our Cyclops by one. Wow. 1-8 one, Trample. At the very least, we can just tap their creatures down. Looks good. I like these short, sweet matches where your opponent doesn't draw very well, and then maybe you have a quick, aggressive game too that you can pull ahead in. Now, fun, some of these cards have watermarks. I guess here's the rule. If it's two colors, it has a watermark, or it's a planeswalker. And if it has the keyword from the set, it has a watermark. But just because it is obviously an it creature, that doesn't mean it has to has a, have a watermark. They have all these mentors, and they get the attack in the air. So we have to worry a little bit about whether we're dead this next turn. And if not, we can try to get in with our pack beast. Well, we're not going to kill them this turn. That's the thing. There is a pump spell for plus three, plus three. They might have here. Hopefully they don't, <laughs> but let's take heart. Take, take heart, me hearties. We're going to gain an extra life here and do an extra damage with our Cyclops. That is my plan. And followed up with Ledev Guardian. Take heart on something they can't easily kill. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, but we do more damage here. We have a blocker. So their pump spell isn't as likely to kill us. And yeah, they, they sort of need multiple answers here and I, I don't think they'll quite get there. Ah, it's, clo it's still close though. They're only at five. If they make attacks, that looks good. Searching for a, a land. And hopefully they only have two blockers left. Oh, it's going to be so close. It's going to be so close. Because they don't really want to attack with the Blade Instructor. They kind of do to pump up the Hellion. Yeah, okay. I'm hoping they have a trick here. instead of another blocker because <laughs> we would lose to another well we could lose to another blocker i think we definitely beat a trick and they do have take heart oh not that trick and a blocker dawn of hope oh it's so close but it's definitely not winning now oh they had take heart <laughs> why did they have to have take heart Get in four damage here. Then what? Then we have a big old pack beast, and they can attack for six in the air that we can't block. It's about as well as we can hope to do. Put them at four. Hope to draw something that crushes their patrol. Or, yeah, I mean, then we have four more trample, too. So 
So two bad things can happen. They can win this turn, or we can not win next turn. And we're dead either way. But there is a chance we can win next turn. Dawn of Hope. They only have one card left. They, they drew a land, or maybe they had a land. They can only make one token, which is going to be a good blocker. They're wondering whether they should just attack with the patrol or attack with the legionnaire as well. And I guess I'd be happy if they just attack with the patrol, but it might be easier for us to win if they attack with the legionnaire too. Or they might attack with everything because they have another take heart. And that's also bad. Here we have to attempt to trade off. Yeah, might as well kill their mentor creature because that that's already added three counters. This is the premium white common. Oh, does that do it? No, it doesn't. Oh, it's so close to doing it, but it doesn't do it. It might help us survive. The problem is they can make they can make a 1-1 one, one blocker on the ground with a lifelink. So yeah. We have to double chump. and then hope to draw something pretty good next turn. The locket doesn't really help us. This thing. Force in two damage. Yeah, this is gonna get out of control if they're allowed to have Dawn of Hope for any amount of time. How are the attacks looking? Not great. Token number one, and token is better to do than whatever they had in hand. Maybe that was just their forest. But that means two Dawn of Hopes each turn. And they have their own Sky Knight off the top. <laughs> this was not ever going to be winnable given, given these draws, so yeah. The mentor becomes the mentee. All right. All right. Collar still seems good. Crush contraband still seems good. Maybe our big plan of divine visitation can get there. Maybe it can't. But I like our plan without going to direct current here. They have a few good targets for direct current, but it doesn't seem better than anything else we're doing. So on the play. On the play with a typical two land hand, but we have both colors. We have our early play. We can shut down some of their stuff with collar. We don't know what deck they're going to be in. Looks like Naya again, possibly. Land's a good draw. Amara, oh no. There's no one drop convoke card in this set, so that, hopefully that's not too bad for us. Amara, soul of the accord. When this guy attacks, it's gonna make a one one white soldier with a lifelink. That's already really good, but it can also convoke out something. Bonds the Legionnaire. Sure. I 
because I have no idea what to do here. Um, just hold back to block Amara. Yeah, I guess that's what what we're doing. They might think we have the trick, which is possible. Caller's a good answer to their trick. Yeah, I guess my plan here is just to get to five mana, play Visitation, get to six mana, play Dawn of Hope, and make a Sarah Angel every turn. Otherwise, we can just play uh, Collar if we find a target for it. Yeah, it looks like they have the trick for Amara. But <laughs> I'll go for this. They do have Take Heart. Um, we don't, so there's that. District Guide. Scout and Dawn. This means once we get to five, we don't have to get to six to activate Dawn, so I guess we'll just play that and hope to trade this with Amara. Oh, it's, it's not looking good. It's not looking good, but a 4-4 four, four Angel every turn is something we can maybe look forward to. This looks like they have another Take Heart, or Sure Strike, or something, but it'd be crazy not to block here, so <laughs> I'm gonna block. Even if we trade off, it's gotten three soldiers. One-one counter, well that's good. I wish it was two one-one counters. And a Blade Instructor, so this is getting out of hand. This is this is getting out of hand. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And we go to one, and then we can make our first angel. How does that sound? That sounds really bad. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We could go to four, then go to five, and then trade off with their blade instructor. We definitely don't win if we play Visitation. Pack Beast is also worse than making a lifelinker in a lot of ways. Just a bit too powerful of a start over there. Amara, Amara kind of going nuts. And we're just dead no matter what this next turn. Conclave Tribunal. Oh, no. That's a good card. Yep, we need to block too many creatures, so we'll give this one to them. Three and one, so... Last round, Let's see if we can pull out the four and one. Some trivia, that deck we were just beaten by was already four and oh, so we're playing up to them that round. And I, I know that because they just appeared on the trophy board and they just earned it once they beat us. So I will keep this, looks good. Good enough, I guess, got her. Lightning Helix, got her turn three play, got her Divine Visitation. This might have been, I mean, I keep saying I'm not sure if this was uh, correct to put in. And out of four rounds, we only got it working once. Go here. And sometimes it's sort of rotted in our hand. I wanted to try it, I mean, it's a flashy card. And it is powerful enough 
for sure if you have maybe four token makers, especially token makers that work the turn this comes into play, like the battalion creature. Eh, fair trade here. I mean, they come out a bit ahead because of jumpstart. Isaac Newton doing an is it deck. We'll go figure. Well, 1 4. Put a little collar on that Drake to begin with. They already drew a card from it, so congrats. They're way ahead now. Rampaging Monument with th what the heck? Oh, whenever you cast a multicolor spell, it gets bigger. With Dawn of Hope and our Divine Visitation combo. So I just want to survive this thing. Intervention is the damage. Uh, they shouldn't be able to protect it here. There's Unless they have the hybrid pump in red-white. That would have been insane. If they had their own integrity to, to pump it up and then give it a permanent boost. All right, Piston Fist, Cyclops. It's time. Yes, and in case we draw the land next turn, we are playing Divine Visitation. They say, what does this card do? Agent Surveil, so we'll probably be taking a huge hit here, a third of our life, but it'll be worth it. As long as they don't deal with our Divine Visitation. Ornery Goblin and Erratic Cyclops, the big guy that we have. No spell this turn, but I mean, this sets up for a huge thing next turn. Dawn of Hope, there's our combo. Every four mana is a Sarah Angel for the rest of the game. Is it soon enough? Spent a lot of mana and time to get this first angel, for sure. And if they don't have the spell, that's pretty good. It's going to be some giant five damage to Dawn of Hope, and we take six, seven, eight. We take 11. Just, okay, just 10. <laughs> just 10. There's another instant. I think that's a rare, though, for six mana. I just got to think of the worst thing possible that can happen to you. Pass here. At least they didn't get to attack with their Cyclops there. If we made the Angel before combat, they would have gotten all of that. Um, if they direct current us, we go to six, and we're definitely dead. So we're dead on board. Ornery Goblin, just a little aggressive thing that's pretty hard to block. All of their creatures are kind of hard to deal with. Cool deck. Let's see if they figure it out. I mean, we have lots of mana up. The name like Isaac Newton, I, I expect they'll figure it out. Discarding Selective Snare, which is a good one to know about. Right, nothing we can block there it saves us. Okay, we got our combo out and it wasn't good enough. It wasn't fast enough. What does that tell us? No idea, but we don't want Crush Contraband. Or maybe we do. They have that artifact. I could see that not being good enough. No, I'll still play it. I believe it's better than Direct Current here. So let us submit like this for the life of our tournament. 
Would you like to play first? Yeah, and this looks good enough. It's got our two lands. The tricks are going to help out a lot. Oh, you know it's not maybe very good? The Righteous Blow. Yeah, it deals with the 3-2 attacker. Come on. Once again, this is our big turn to draw land. Flying when it attacks, surveil one. Nice. All right, so that starts the the damage. They might just have the, the shock that'll kill this. Hopefully not. They liked their top card. That means they'll almost definitely have a land drop here. And it's blue. So that's not going to be the two damage spell that we saw last game. Yeah, Surveil is pretty good, but the damage is how we're going to win this. And they're taking away Invent, just too much mana, I suppose. Get our Locket, see if this thing gets countered. It does not, so we're in it. We can attack here, and it's nice to pass with this trick up and the Righteous Blow, which didn't know if it was going to be great, but it looks like it's going to be good enough in this situation. Yeah, two targets for it. Direct Current. Yeah, take, take Heart. Sucks that we can't use it on our turn, but there you go. And if we keep letting them surveil, that, that's really bad, but so is taking way too much damage. So I'm going to kill this, which can also block our pack beast, and let them surveil. Um, I shouldn't have given them more information, but it's what we're going to do anyway. Okay, that's a good card to draw here. Get our pack beast out there so we have a board that can pressure them a little bit. We've got three points of burn in hand. We have Collar the Culprit for their giant Cyclops or whatever defender they play first. If we make it to game three, we should put in our little goblin that can't be blocked by walls if that's not already in. Another direct current. Okay, that's good. That's good. And if they get up to six mana, they can f jumpstart both of them to kill our poor pack beast. It's flying. But we're winning this race as it stands. What do you have for us? Five damage to Pack Beast? Okay, Ornery Goblin. It's a good answer to the recruit, for sure. And the Pack Beast, for that matter. So <laughs> we're forced to use Intervention on the, the Goblin, the two mana, two one Goblin. Spend our best, the best spell in our deck to kill it, just to get some da damage in. Um, uh, yeah, I'll do it. Well, hold on. We can draw an extra card with Dawn of Hope. If we wait. Yeah, let's not wait. This damage is too important. So, Intervention. On the Goblin. Counter it, we take two. Counter it and surveil one. Sure. We're gonna have a lot of one ones potentially, so I'll trade off. I mean, it 
does lose them a card. Gravitic Punch. Erratic Cyclops. Nice. We have an answer to that. They're going to attack and surveil. We're going to kill that and get in two damage and hopefully play Dawn of Hope in addition to all that. Of course, there's a couple more gates in our deck. Nice. One, two, three, four. Goodbye, Cyclops. Hello, Dawn of Hope. <laughs> this is really the Dawn of Hope, the beginning of, of hope for this game. Hopefully we can pull something out here. And, you know, a bunch of surveils isn't quite as good. Like, I think a surveil one isn't as good as a 1-1 one, one token, so if that's all we're doing each turn, maybe we're okay. That is direct current one back from the graveyard, discarding a mountain. And they did that before even surveilling, so I guess they were really confident in that play. Legionnaire gets some damage, more damage in than the Dawn of Hope. But maybe we could have expected to draw more cards with the Dawn of Hope. All right, second direct current coming back, discarding an island. We've we've got them on the ropes here, definitely. Extra lands are going to be great. We hope. Rampaging Monument. Yeah. Yeah, I left in my enchantment destruction, right? Trample, too. A good card. Most decks will just be happy to play it. Two color decks, three color decks. Neat. Pack Beast to tap it. Yeah, that's actually really good this turn because we will gain the life and draw the card. And put three power on the field. Get our own Cyclops. <laughs> Some multicolor spell, it's going to be... No, it's not. It's just five damage. And they're going to keep back the sprite. Get our gate in there. Should we trade our soldier for a card? I don't think we need to do that yet. We can just leave this back, play our Cyclops. And maybe maybe that'll be better later. Yeah, maybe we could have. Card might be worth more than the soldier. Soldier's worth more than the scry, but the card's worth more than the soldier. The surveil, rather. Ooh, a dev champion, too. Right off the face, unless they have counter magic, it makes sense to put the champion into play. And then hold up, you know, both our token makers for a turn. Another five damage can't be countered six damage to any target and they're hitting us so i don't feel safe i do not feel safe 
they did have this. They also had the five damage to a creature, but they they have this inescapable blaze. They just need two more damage to kill us here. And then we are three and two. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target player. And that's three and we're dead. Cool, cool to see an is it deck. I mean, not the best um, results for this this league, but hope you enjoyed watching that. Good luck in your pre-release or your seals, and I'll catch you next time.